This is a follow-up to the aluminum and mercury video that I did about a month ago. If you haven't seen that one yet, I highly suggest you watch it before this one, otherwise it might not make sense. Anyway, in the comments of the original video, a lot of you just told me that I pronounced aluminum wrong, but there were some of you who had good suggestions. The tower that's growing is made of aluminum oxide, which forms as the mercury exposes fresh aluminum to the air. So, a bunch of you asked, what would happen if the air is removed and there's no oxygen to react with the aluminum? Well, in theory, the reaction should stop, but it's definitely something worth trying out. There were two other questions which were less scientific and mostly just out of pure curiosity. What if we tried this reaction upside down, or if we did it in multiple spots at the same time and had the towers collide? I'm going to answer all these questions, and I'll start with the most popular one, which is to see what happens when I take the air away. So to test this out, I need to run it in a vacuum chamber. The rest of the setup is exactly like before though. I drill a hole into an aluminum plate, and I treat it with hydrochloric acid to get rid of the protective oxide layer. Then I quickly add the mercury, and I close the chamber. I don't show it here, but I also attach my vacuum pump to an adapter at the top. One thing to remember though, is that this reaction is really slow, and everything you see here has been sped up by about 90 times. What I'm going to do now is just wait and let it grow, and when it gets to a decent height, I'll turn on the pump. If you're curious as to what exactly is going on here, and you want more details, Again, I suggest you watch my original video, which I'll link in the description. I turn on my vacuum pump right about now, and you can see that its growth rate slows down a lot. However, despite pulling the best vacuum that I can, it is still growing. No vacuum pump is perfect, especially mine, and because of this, there's still some oxygen in there that's able to slowly react with the exposed aluminum. One other thing to notice is that the color clearly changes when I turned on the vacuum, but I'll talk about this later. After letting it grow for a while, I release the vacuum to let the air back in. When I do this, the growth rate immediately increases and goes back to normal. So the results here were pretty good, but I wanted to see if I could get it even slower. So I tried it again, but slightly differently. After pulling the best vacuum that my pump could do, I repressurized it with nitrogen gas. Then I pulled the vacuum again and repeated the process. When I do this, I get rid of nearly all the oxygen and the rate becomes incredibly slow. I only did the purging process two or three times here, but I imagine if I did it three or four times, I might have been able to get things to stop completely. I think what this really shows me is just how sensitive aluminum is to oxygen. Even with only a very, very small amount present, it was still able to react with it. Anyway, at this point I'm done playing around with it, so I take the top off the chamber and I let air get in. And just like in the other run, it very quickly starts growing again. Now I want to take a closer look at it, so I very carefully take it out. The major thing to talk about here are probably the dark bands that formed every time the air was removed. I think this happens because as the fibers grow, they pull small amounts of mercury with them. When it's growing at its normal rate, it pulls just enough to get a slight grey colour. When the oxygen's taken away though, the rate of growth slows down a lot and it for some reason pulls more mercury with it. That's just my theory though, and if you don't agree with it, feel free to tell me what you think in the comments. Okay, that was the more sciencey thing I wanted to cover, but now I want to just do a couple things for fun. I'll start by answering the first question, which is, is it possible to do this reaction upside down? Well, it is possible, I would just have to set things up a little bit differently. The mercury would normally just slip right off the plate, but I know a way to get it to stick. However, I didn't think it would be that interesting, and it would just look like the same thing, only upside down. A much easier and faster way to do this would be to just flip the video. This idea of doing things upside down did give me an idea though, and I wondered if it were possible to grow something from both sides of the plate at the same time. 
To try this out, I cut out another piece of aluminum, but this time I drill a hole all the way to the other side, and I glue some pieces of a coat hanger to it. A bit of tape is used to cover the hole, and then I add both the acid and the mercury at the same time. This way, the mercury attaches immediately when the fresh aluminum is exposed. If you look closely, as the acid reacts, you can see the mercury droplets start to spread out. Now, when I use some paper towel to take the acid away, the hole is nice and shiny and completely covered with mercury. This is the technique that I was referring to when I said I knew a way to make the mercury stick. I pull away the tape to open the hole again, and surprisingly, nothing falls out. The reaction has already started, so I quickly reposition the camera and I set it up for a time lapse. Only a few seconds after it started, most of the mercury ended up falling out of the hole. So unfortunately, everything that's going to grow here is only going to be from the residual mercury that's still stuck to the plate. As it continued growing, the first thing that I noticed was that the tower was a lot thicker than it normally is. I'm pretty sure this happened because as I was repositioning things to set up the time lapse, I accidentally knocked the plate and some mercury spilled out. It quickly stuck to the aluminum around it and I couldn't clean it off, so things are just growing from a wider area this time. In any case though, even though all the extra mercury fell out right at the beginning and I also knocked a bunch of it out of the hole, it was still a success. I'm not sure why, but the top one died relatively quickly. The one on the bottom went for a lot longer, but its base slowly got weaker and weaker until it eventually couldn't support its own weight. Even with it gone though, it was still pretty cool because these little fibers kept growing and continuously falling off. So because this worked so well, I decided to try it one last time. The stuff growing in this run wasn't nearly as wide as before, and honestly, I didn't think it was as cool either. However, what it did show me was that the thickening of the tower is probably not because of the technique that I'm using, and it's most likely just because I knocked things. There was one similarity with the other run though, where the tower on the top died relatively quickly. I'm not sure if this is specifically caused by anything though, or if it was just coincidence. Now for the last test, what would happen if I did it in a few spots at the same time, and had the towers overlap? Well, honestly, it's not too interesting, but I figured I'd include the footage anyway. The setup for this is pretty much the same as the original one, except I just drill three holes. I initially tried to do the typical thing where I add the acid followed by the mercury, but I was having a lot of trouble getting them to start at the same time. So I ended up having to use the same technique as before, where everything's added all at once. When it looks like it's done, I take away as much acid as possible, and then I add more mercury to each one. The reaction starts very quickly, so I set up my time lapse and I just wait for them to run into each other. In this run, for whatever reason, the one on the middle and the left get weaker and weaker at the base. The one on the right seems to be a lot stronger, and it holds the others up, until eventually it's not able to anymore. I don't think the weakening here is a result of the overlapping towers, and I think it's something that just happens. It even happened with my original one, when it was just one tower. I did another run, but I messed up the beginning, so I didn't think it was worth filming it. Oddly enough though, it actually turned out to be a lot cleaner. I don't have a time lapse, but this is what the final three towers looked like, and it was pretty mundane. It didn't really seem like they cared the other ones were there, and they all just merge together. If I knock everything down and clean up the plate, we can see that the amalgamated areas basically just combine together. Anyway, I think that's about it. I just really want to cover some of the questions you guys had. There's probably some other cool stuff that I could do with it, but this is going to be the last video because I feel like I've covered enough. As usual, a big thanks goes out to all my supporters on Patreon. Everyone who supports me can see my videos at least 24 hours before I post it to YouTube, and they can also directly message me. All supporters with $5 or more will get their name at the end of the video like you see here.